you are listening to the Native Solidarity News presented by the Urban Indigenous Radio Collective on CKUT 90.3 FM. On today's episode, we are joined by... Denzel Southern Wilson from the Gixan Nation, McGill student. Wayne Robinson, Ojibwe from Pick River First Nations. And I am Patricia Johnson Castle, uh, Inuk uh, from Nunasiabu. Uh, So first, our community happenings. In the afternoon of November 8th, from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m., the Indigenous Studies Program presents a keynote by Professor C. Richard King called Origins, Interpretations, and Impact on the Use of Indigenous Imagery in North American Sports. Um, This also ties into the deep dive that we're going to be doing today, which is some updates on the Change the Name campaign um, at McGill University uh, against uh, the terrible men's team name of uh, the Red Men. So, Denzel, do you want to explain to us a little bit about how the campaign has gone so far? Okay, well, this is a campaign, really, that's been going on for, like, years and years and years, where Indigenous students have been, like, opposed to the, to the Red Men name. But this, like, most recent iteration has been um, led by the SMU Indigenous Affairs Committee at McGill and the SMU Indigenous Affairs Commissioner, Tomas Jirasek, who's, like, really picked it up and put in a lot of work and effort into it. And you can find articles and interviews with him all over by like meant most of the news uh, sources here in Montreal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you say something? Hello. Perfect. Okay, well, that sounds good. Um, can you clap like right in front of your face? Um, so my name is Tomas Drusik. I'm the Commissioner of Indigenous Affairs here at the University. I come from the Kainai First Nation, a member nation of the Blackfoot Confederacy, and I'm an Indigenous varsity athlete here at the University. So we've received an overwhelming amount of support from our non-Indigenous allies here at the University, demonstrating a lot of allyship, standing in solidarity with Indigenous students, but at the same time, we've received a small but vocal minority of students who do prefer to keep the red name. October 31st, we um, we had a demonstration with uh, many speakers and music, and um, it was at the uh, the Milton Gates here. We had a, a pretty great turnout, um, despite all the rain. Um, yeah, people stood for like an hour and a half in the rain. It was that was that was really nice to see. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're going to have this tent right here. This is going to be for our speakers. Yeah, tent here for speakers. That tent's drumming. That tent, maybe food or something. That tent's also probably for people who are cold and wet. I'm not sure if anyone else is right. It's engineering. It's just, it's just, I've got to use the OAP tent. Excited. 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 We're gonna put it in here. Oh, yeah. Are you sitting for you? Yeah. No, super. Thank you. Sorry, my hands are cold. I have a poster, though. I have a poster. <laughs> group leaders! Or gr- and groups, but group leaders for sure. I don't, know who, I don't know who you are, but if you come here, or just groups, people who are in groups, if you know that you're in a group, come to me.
let me ask what's the one. Uh, we'll ask what's the one. So, um, thank you everyone for being here. Um, my name is Alex, and I'm from List Kush Mi'kmaq First Nation. I'm uh, Mi'kmaq myself, part of Bear Clan. Um, the song that we had sung was a. Uh, it's called the Mi'kmaq Gathering Song. And the significance of it is that we tend to sing that when we are called invoking our ancestors to come stand with us. And so we thought that it would be appropriate to start out with that after the welcoming song. I myself got involved with McGill when I was 14 years old. Um, I was invited to an opportunity to participate in something called the Eagle Spirit High Performance Camp. And I had a great time, but yet the name was there, Redmond. And I felt very alienated by that. And I looked around and I was wondering if other people did. I didn't see any uh, look of shock on people's faces, so I just internalized it. I actually work for a organization now that um, essentially leads the camp. And the reason why that I wanted to invoke our ancestors is because this not only spans back the generations before, but it spans back to the, or towards the generations ahead of us. I'm not going to look another kid in the face again when I invite them down into this camp and see the look of shock on their face when he hears that our name is Redmond. Thank you. So uh, it connects to identity for me a lot. Like, who am I? What am I doing here? Do I really belong here uh, at McGill in Canada, what we call Canada? Um, <laughs> the line it is drawn and the curse it is cast. The slow one now will later be passed. As the present now will later be past, the order is rapidly fading. And the first one now will later be last, for the times they are a changing. For the time. For the university to use names such as the Miguel Squaws. And the Miguel Indians, some of the most derogatory slurs you can use for Indigenous people. Okay, slurs well, that, that was in 1950s for about a dozen years. In the grand total of McGill's 160 years of varsity athletics. I, I do want to introduce some callers into the discussion here. I, I just wanted to share um, a passage that's been passed down through the rugby team for the last um, 15 years, the rugby team at McGill. When all is said and done, memories will fade but I will always dream about the red jersey. I put it on each week knowing that this brought me one step closer to losing the jersey, losing it to a young man who was lucky enough to be at McGill. It almost seems felt like the media has been like another player in the campaign. Yeah. And that it's not like it's just the students and the university, but the media like trying to kind of get an angle on it and like yeah. create a story outside of what we're trying to tell or like turn the story that we're telling into something that it isn't. They would always make it seem like like it was these the white saviors yeah. coming in. And so, yeah. Well, it's, uh, I, now that I'm thinking of it, I'm thinking back to like the interviews and the type of questions they asked you. They're always like grilling you about their yeah. or other side's arguments. Yeah. And I don't think once they brought up our arguments yeah. to like interview the other yeah. side. You know, they have these arguments, they attack with that. Mm -hmm. And then we have the argument that you know, it's indigenous students are hurting and it doesn't matter what the origin was. But we can we can dissect every part of their argument, but they never wanted to get into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They always just wanted to, and I always felt like they just wanted to portray indigenous students like me. Like I was like some type of snowflake or like overly sensitive. Yeah. sort of like, where really the emotions seem to be more of a part on their side. Yeah. I've had first-year Indigenous students tabling all over campus who have been harassed, who have been made to feel other, to be made to be a feel alone. Indigenous students don't want to go to the media because we feel scared. Indigenous oh, students come don't. On. Mr. Thomas, look, I'm a basketball dad, alumni. My daughter played five years at McGill. I've never heard a word of what you're saying. So I think this is ridiculous to bring that story to the media. Really is. Yeah. Um, it, no, it's true. It did to me as well. And the fact that, like, 
1,200 people still voted against changing the name. The fact that we still know there are 1,200 people here who you know, deny that experience of Indigenous students. Yeah. At least. At least. <laughs> the fact that there's this faceless mass who don't want to change it, like who push against Indigenous students. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I guess it's kind of exactly what happens across the country every day. Like they know who we are, but we don't know which of them are the ones who are pushing back. Like, and they yeah. know everything about me now. Like, but look at these first years. We're doing so many, so many cool things that I yeah. wasn't able to do my yeah. first year. Like I came in as a first year, knowing none of this, and these kids are already like way, way above sure. where like I felt I was. It makes me so excited to see that. Yeah, like we have people like mm -hmm. who are gonna change this university, yeah. and that we can give them some platform hopefully before we leave mm -hmm. so they can really launch and to, you know attacking the institution changing the institution yeah. like making this a better place totally for the times they are a change